Great apes, that is gorillas, orangutans and chimpanzees, are our closest relatives in the animal kingdom. The common ancestor for us and the great apes emerged and diversified 23 million to 5 million years ago. Chimps are our closest relatives, as we both descended from a common ancestor that lived 6 or 7 million years ago. It is because of this relationship that we have much of our DNA in common. In fact, most studies show that we have 98.5% of our DNA in common with chimps, and similar studies have shown that we share 98% of our genetic sequence with gorillas and 97% with orangutans. Given this similarity, are the great apes at risk of becoming infected with coronavirus? While great apes in captivity do contract seasonal flu, and in many zoos receive an annual flu vaccine, just as you or I would. Captive orangutans have frequently been reported to suffer from upper respiratory tract diseases such as the common cold and sinusitis. And respiratory viruses have been documented in wild populations of chimps, even killing some. For example, in Uganda in February of 2013, there was an outbreak of rhinovirus C, which is the common cold, amongst the group of chimps, which resulted in five chimps out of the community of 56 dying. We don't usually die from it, however it's been seen to kill what are otherwise healthy chimps. In fact it has been reported that respiratory viruses cause up to 20% of sudden deaths. Infectious disease is the second most common cause of death in mountain gorillas and the most common kind of infections being respiratory infections. In 2009 a group of gorillas living in Rwanda became ill with a respiratory disease. They experienced coughing, eye and nose discharge and lethargy. The group consisted of 12 animals, all but one became ill and two died, an adult female and a newborn infant. Tissue analysis was carried out on the two dead gorillas and they were found to have been infected with the human HMPV. HMPV is a respiratory virus that causes an upper respiratory infection. It is also thought that the Ebola virus has killed thousands of chimpanzees and gorillas in Africa. Researchers have established that the COVID-19 virus binds to a specific enzyme called the ACE2 to infect cells, and the great apes also have this enzyme. From all this evidence, it is reasonable to assume that these beautiful creatures are also at risk of contracting COVID-19, the same as we are. At the present time, there's been no known cases of great apes contracting the disease, and measures have been put in place to protect both captive and wild populations. At the moment, many zoos are closed to the public, but the animals still need to be cared for. To help protect the great apes, some zoos are testing their animal care staff for coronavirus and are keeping their distance from the animals. The staff are wearing face masks and their temperature is taken regularly. Some staff have even chosen to live on site, away from their families. And it is not just zoos that need to be careful. Some great apes live in rehabilitation centres, such as the orangutans at Sepilok in Borneo and the centre run by the Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation. The same safety measures as those in zoos are being observed. These centres, which rely on entrance fees of visitors to help look after the orangutans, are also struggling financially and are in need of donations to continue to protect these majestic animals. I have mentioned the rehabilitation centre at Sepilok in previous videos, particularly the one on Palmor, and I make no apologies for mentioning it again. It is a place I was privileged to visit a few years ago with the family and we were lucky enough to watch a female orangutan with her baby feeding at one of the stations that are set up. It was one of the most memorable moments of my life and I hope to go back and spend more time there. Saba, which is the area where Sepilok is situated, went into lockdown on the 18th of March. Rangers at the centre are employed by the government and as such are no longer working. Luckily, most of the staff at Sepilok's indoor and outdoor nurseries are local Malaysians who are employed by Orangutan Appeal UK and they volunteered to keep working. They find themselves in a challenging situation, with the additional costs of maintaining effective hygiene but with less money coming in. Tourism has not been banned in Sumatra, an Indonesian island which is home to the critically endangered Sumatran Orangutan. And in order to protect these animals, the orangutan project has moved some of the island's 800 orangutans to a second site. This must have been quite traumatic for the orangutans, but it is hoped that by dividing up the population, if there was an individual who contracted the disease, at least the other population might survive. If one of the orangutans contracts COVID-19, it will spread fast, and with numbers of orangutans so low, this will have dire consequences to the continuation of the species, as orangutans are critically endangered. 
This is also true of the other great apes. Chimpanzees are listed as an endangered species, as are the mountain gorillas, whose numbers are on the increase, but lowland gorillas are still considered critically endangered. In Africa, tourism to visit gorillas has stopped, and 130 Ugandan Wildlife Authority rangers have been trained on how to monitor the gorillas for signs of coronavirus and best practice on how to keep the virus away from them. Researchers have to quarantine themselves for 14 days before going into the jungle. They also have to have their temperature taken, wear masks and keep a distance of 10 metres away from the gorillas. Also in Africa, in Thai National Park, chimp behaviour has been studied for nearly 40 years. Researchers are collecting faeces and testing to see if it contains COVID-19. If any of the chimps fall ill and are too weak to climb into their nests, the researchers plan to sleep nearby to protect them from poachers and leopards. To help reduce the hunting of wild meat and keep people as far away from the great apes as possible, researchers are offering goats to local communities. So many amazing people are doing what they can to help keep our dwindling populations of great apes as safe as possible. We just have to hope that they themselves stay safe and that their efforts are justly rewarded so that we can emerge from this pandemic not only with cleaner water and air, but sustainable populations of our beautiful great apes.